Hey everybody, welcome to the MelFit Podcast, where we talk all things health, fitness, and lifestyle. As you heard on the intro, I am an online health and fitness expert with over 20 years of experience. Today is August 4th, 2022. Josh and I just got back from holiday. (laughs) Boom, shaka, laka, boom. Didn't even know we were on vacation, did you? That's how we like it. That means we didn't ignore you. We still do some things on the back end. But what we took a break from was our daily um, filming, editing content, creating content, and that kind of thing. So we're back. The first half, well, let's let's ask Josh. So, Josh, uh, how was your holiday? Uh, for the most part, it was pretty good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Name the three funnest things you did. Um, I got to hang out with my parents best friends and I got to finally bring my mom on what she's been wanting to do for like the longest time she wanted to go to Bonner's Ferry I don't know why but is she a gambler <laughs> yeah not really to the, you guys got a room at the casino yeah I think it was more the the Kootenai River view oh so yeah. did you just get a killer view yeah did you guys just chill and have mm. breakfast yep and we had breakfast right out by the water oh and nice yeah yeah and the third gosh it was just being able to clear my mind and not be so stressed out yeah so <laughs> the one thing that we talked about i mean josh and i have been <laughs> grinding i mean we've done more in just a a few years than most normal people it would probably take them six years to do what we've done in just three yeah and i mean we've been grinding but one thing i told josh before we took holiday is that you know you got to just step back sometimes and just enjoy the fruits of your labor like i could work around the clock if i wanted to but that's not why we created melfit and that's not the life i want that's not the life josh wants and we want longevity we don't want to get burnt out we want to we we both want this to be our forever profession so it's kind of nice to you know I did a few things, Josh did a few things, but just to know that each day is yours and and uh, really just enjoy. And then you do clear your head and then you're actually ready to come back to work yeah. and, you know, roll your sleeves up. We're getting a little bit of a slow start because unfortunately at the end of Josh's holiday, he got the worst food poisoning ever. Yeah. And otherwise he was going to come and chill out at my house, but... That's okay. Summer is still going. So, but yeah, so it's good to be back. It's good to be connected with you guys. I don't like to disconnect too much, but I do deserve, as well as Josh does, a break once in a while and uh, just really puts us in a good, good, good spot. So we were going to do a podcast last week, but I literally have barely had a voice for two weeks. (laughs) And then Josh had the same thing. And honestly, I cannot figure out if whether it's allergies. And I'm still a little raspy. I can't figure out if it's a summer cold or what. But I would have been really worthless on the podcast. So uh, the podcast today, uh, we're going to have to, during the podcast, we'll have to come up with a catchy title. I've got a few ideas. But we're we're, we're going to be focusing on rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis and interviewing Josh and Josh is going to just tell you a little bit about it and we posted on our Facebook group um, I had asked Josh you know a couple of questions and it really sparked a conversation and I feel like there's a lot of people out there with RA and there's a lot of clients out there with uh, different um, autoimmune diseases and in my opinion most autoimmune diseases are reversible or can be put into remission so hopefully this is a, a subject that most people either have had excuse me I got a fuzzy on my mouth here had uh, a bat with some kind of an inflammation it might not have been as serious as RA or they do have another autoimmune disease that causes inflammation and and the best way to describe what inflammation is 
your body's job is to keep you alive and heal you. So when something traumatic happens to your body, its reaction is what, Josh? I always like to put Josh on the spot. <laughs> I don't know. It, its reaction is to flare up <laughs> yeah. and swell up. It's like the to best. To fight back. Yeah, right? to fight back. And and what it does is when it swells up, it really is just protecting everything. So, like, if you sprain your ankle, what happens? If someone punches in the eye, what happens? So, it swells up before it heals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, when I met Josh, uh, just a little backstory. He told me that um, the rheumatoid arthritis is hereditary and not reversible. I do believe both of those things, but we'll talk about how um, we helped Josh with his RA. So I'm going to first go over kind of the techie educational part of this, Josh, just in case anybody listening or watching doesn't know what it is. RA is a chronic progressive disease causing inflammation in the joints resulting in painful deformities, immobility, especially in the fingers, wrist, feet, and ankles. Symptoms of RA, pain in areas in the joints, back, or muscles, stiffness, swelling, tenderness, weakness, whole body fatigue, anemia, malaise, which is a feeling of discomfort, uneasiness, or pain, Lumps or redness, bumps on the finger or swelling, um, flare-ups, dry mouth, again, physical deformity, or the sensation of pins and needles. Anything I left out? Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> Treatments, we'll talk about that a little bit after Josh kind of goes into. So, we are going to start with, I think that, Josh, you should let the, the listeners know what was your lifestyle like before and what was your view on RA? How long have you had it? When did you get diagnosed? What did they, so just kind of take your time and kind of go through the timeline. Like, did it happen when you were 10 or 18? So. Okay. Actually, um, uh, it started, I started getting bumps on my hands. So that, yeah. Yeah. And, when I went to the doctor, you know, you just get a steroid treatment, it's gone. So they thought maybe it was just, you know, uh, a little, you know, inflammation here or there. And then they happened, it kept happening, and I kept getting tired of the steroid treatments because uh, it makes me, even though it gives me a lot of energy, it makes me sweat a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and how old were you? I was actually, this was only like two years ago. Oh, so you just developed this yeah. a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, kept going to a doctor, and the doctor thought I was, I had gout. But uh, I didn't believe that because uh, gout, I oh, feel. Oh, that's right, because you developed yeah. this when we were. Yeah, gout together. was it's more of a feet off isn't it yeah a lot like, of people get it in their feet yeah so i didn't have any feet problems so i kind of didn't think it was that then i got more blood tests and my inflammation markers came back very high extremely high and that's when the they i got sent to a rheumatologist and they wanted to start uh, aggressive treatment because my inflammation markers were so high and that was due to you know when I was watching what I eat you know it was the bet wasn't the best it started with you know not when I was working before Melissa was uh, delivering food and I had to get quick meals you know fast food uh, it makes me sick to my stomach now because mm -hmm. fast food Ha seeing how it's prepped it 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 explains a lot so all that inflammation just built up and built up and it it created some damage through my blood markers so then the rheumatologist uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of it it's called mexotrexate it was it was very very awful I'd get 
um, uh, shots on s Saturdays because Sundays I would be very sick because it it attacks the inflammation in your body. I guess it's like a, an overactive immune system and it tries to regulate your immune system and that's how methotrexate fights back but it was it was <laughs> I told I went into my next appointment I said I gotta get off of this this is I'm sick every week on Sundays because of this medication and that was gonna be your life yes because they pretty much told you that it's not cured yeah so and then you know fast forward I I sat down with Melissa and I'm like well she kind of pulled me aside <laughs> she's like we you know I thought I had to live with this for forever because uh, growing up my uh, my grandma had it she was the first one in the family to have it so I thought I kind of inherited it from her and that's how I live is how she used to live but meaning uh, you know, she was very uh, in a lot of pain uh, bed written a lot uh, my mom said in the early days that she'd just lay in bed and not be able to do anything for the family do you feel like it was due to her lifestyle uh, I do, and unfortunately, I feel like in those day and ages, they didn't have the education that they do now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't have, they don't know what's in food. They just ate food to have food, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then um, Josh comes, well, Josh's mom <laughs> comes from a family of eight, <laughs> and we talked about growing up poor, and <laughs> when you grow up poor, you get what you get, yeah. you know, you get commodities, and unfortunately, <laughs> the food that your eating isn't the healthiest mm -hmm. so although I pride myself in teaching mm -hmm. people that they can afford mm -hmm. healthy food so I uh, wanted to touch on your grandma did she ever get to a point where she tried to educate herself a little bit or was she just convinced that this was going to be her life I think she was convinced as well because the doctors say it's it's you got to live with it <laughs> type of deal and the and the one thing that will Josh will tell you and I hear so often is I always tell people like when someone tells you that you can't do something even a doctor I feel like they're telling you their limitations on how they can diagnose you mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is I'm more educated than most doctors when it comes to my field which is health fitness and nutrition and a lot of doctors it's not their scope of interest so rather than suggesting that Josh make a lifestyle change and switch to Melfit which is an anti-inflammatory meal plan all most Western medicine doctors know to do mm -hmm. is just to give him a pill that's making him sick he can't even do anything I mean and how often was that once a month once a week once a week so what I really hate and what I really want to get people to understand just because one doctor told you one thing it doesn't mean that that's the way it's gonna be I personally would seek out you know the opinion of a couple of other people and maybe even people more like me who are healing people through food food is thy medicine and so, okay, go ahead. I just wanted to get a little bit more information uh, about your grandma. Where were we at? <laughs> so you were, you told the doctor that you couldn't do that anymore. Uh, yes, and then we, we tried another medication. Um, it was another shot. It's, I still had the same reaction. It wasn't as bad, but I, I was like, we got to... I can't do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then he he put me on another one. It was very aggressive, but still not very much side effects, luckily. And it seemed to do, you know, get rid of the pain, but still I've had inflammation in my body. 
and I, you could see on my hands and my knees you could see the the joints swelling up and then uh, where do we go from there I believe it's oh I helped you <laughs> <laughs> exactly when Melissa came in and like I don't know why but it was in front of me the whole entire time you know building this these recipes and it's you know everything's anti-inflammatory and good <laughs> mm -hmm. good for you and mm -hmm. good to eat and I can be a little sarcastic <laughs> and you know I've said this to so many people like you know I know a girl yeah that has over 20 years of experience I could actually I use the word cure some people use the word remission mm -hmm. but if you don't have to take medication for the rest of your life I think that's cure mm -hmm. that's just my opinion yeah so the question on Facebook on the Facebook group was when you finally decided that you were gonna try to and you didn't start exercising back then correct so this was just through nutrition mm -hmm. so you train changed your nutrition mm -hmm. and you're going to the doctor periodically and they're checking you mm -hmm. and that had to have been like a huge aha moment or celebration and was the doctor puzzled did the doctor say so so lead us through how that appointment when went when you mm -hmm. heard that you were in remission because of your nutrition oh and it was so i'm my timeline might be weird so september i do believe i started actually buckling down and then i believe it was March. I went to the doctor. That's when they get the results from the blood test to show your uh, inflammation, inflammation levels. Markers. Yep. And uh, mine were actually very extremely low. So I went from a dangerous high to a unbelievable low. <laughs> And I just want to interject really quick. So it was kind of like they were so high, it was like emergency 911, and that's mm -hmm. why they put you on the strongest stuff because they were yep. ridiculously high. Yeah, they were worried about joint damage at that point. Wow, so yeah. that's serious. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. Uh, and um, he was unbelievably shocked from, I, I want to say it was. December 20 and then yeah it was September 21 I started working with you and then March 2022 was when I got told I believe that's correct that I got told I was very low and going to be put into the remission category so that's about six months. Yeah. But do you feel <laughs> like, I think you answered two months on Facebook. Do you feel like you were really yeah. nipping in the bud after? Yeah. Is that why you said two months? Mm -hmm. Or did you put two months because you felt better in two months? Well, I felt less swelling in my joints okay. after two months. Okay. And it was, yeah. I They don't test. They text, They test every six, six months. So oh, gotcha. I couldn't tell you in between yeah, then. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> did the doctor ask you, what are you doing differently? Was he surprised? Is this common that people actually... This, this is not very common. So, so what, I would have loved was, to have been a fly on yeah, the wall. Yeah, he asked what I did, and I told him my lifestyle changes, and he said, um, never go back and keep going forward, because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I could very well... I, I take low dose just to make them feel good that I'm maintaining. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think it's like five milligrams a day. So it's super, it's, super yeah, low. Yeah, it's just a precaution on mm -hmm. their part just mm -hmm. to make sure if I had a little flare-up, it was attacked. Mm -hmm. So Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Do you think eventually they'll keep, take you off the five milligrams, or oh, yeah. you do? Mm -hmm. So every six months. Yep. 
So September again, you'll I do test. believe so. Then we'll do another podcast <laughs> and we'll see if they still want to have the five milligrams. So mm-hmm. um, the one thing that Josh said that you guys really, really need to hone in on is I say this all the time to my clients. If you want to stay where you are at in remission, not on huge levels of drugs that make you sick and you can't Mm -hmm. even function in your life, you have to continue doing what you did to get here. And I think that is the best warning from the doctor, so I will give that doctor a pat on the back. I usually don't give doctors many pats on the backs, but give him a pat on the back because you know what, I'm a good coach, but I don't coddle, I'm really real. And I I told that to my husband, he reversed his cholesterol from 278 to 178 in two months. And he was celebrating and I said, well, we're not celebrating with red meat here because if you don't continue what you did, which he stopped eating out at Mexican restaurants and he really increased his activity, then we're gonna be right back where we started and no one wants to be in the doctor's office it's a lot of time and popping a pill and all of that so um i think that is a great why and drive for you absolutely so a couple things um i'll i'll go over as far as like and i don't know if you've done any of these josh if you're really bad right now and you haven't made a lifestyle change, a few things you can do for self-care is heat and ice. And the number one thing to know about ice, anything over 15 minutes is not gonna work. Yeah. Ice is better than heat, but heat feels good. Mm-hmm. So if you're gonna do it, alternate between the two. Um, but the, the, the treatments that they recommend um, obviously there's a su- sufa salazine, um, steroids, prednisone, cortisone, um, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of different things that are probably really bad for your kidneys and right. Mm-hmm. Your liver. Um, so like I said earlier, Josh was truly convinced that it was hereditary and that it was not curable now that you are it's not like it's a miracle i don't think (laughs) it's a miracle but it's probably a miracle (laughs) to you so what do you think now like if anybody were to ask you like what do you think now about because you were probably is that the most upset you've ever been was Mm. that kind of like your mom coming to me and me helping her when they told her she needed three surgeries uh it was the second third worst probably third worst <laughs> yeah okay the first worst was probably that my hip <laughs> so but jo- that's a whole different story yeah that's a whole different <laughs> story and josh has perthes which is actually very rare mm-hmm. and um, if i butcher this let me know my older sister has perthes it's a deterioration of the hip mm-hmm. which the only way to fix that is through a hip replacement mm-hmm. But the tricky thing with perthes is that you're growing. So they will not perform hip surgery on Josh until he's... Now, the latest doctor was like 35. But Josh (laughs) is like me now that I've been around him. We don't take no for an answer. So we just will... I would encourage you to get... A second and a third opinion mm-hmm. and also if I was a doctor Josh I would consider that you're, you're you've changed your life you've lost weight mm-hmm. you're taking pressure off the hip and that kind of thing so mm-hmm. that was your first thing do you mind sharing what your second one was uh, it was with my mom and her hernias yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah I remember Josh called me and he's <laughs> uh, his mom had uh, her, they had three hernias? I, yeah. Something like that. And <laughs> and they were telling her that she needed three surgeries, and one of them was gastric bypass. Mm-hmm. And uh, I worked with Josh's mom, Sharon, for... I saw her every week for about a year, year mm-hmm. and a half or more. And us losing the weight... Were you in the room when they told your mom? Yep. <laughs> okay, what'd they tell your mom? They were disappeared. <laughs> oh, it's another miracle. <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't think it's a miracle. It's a miracle for Sharon, it's, but it's yeah. it think it doesn't surprise me just because I I know the I know what I know. I didn't disappear, but you know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> but the warning to your mother also was the same as the warning to you. Yeah. If you gain weight back and if you go back to your old ways, it will come back. So yeah. hopefully if you're listening to this, Sharon, that is on the forefront of your mind. So um and then the third thing was obviously this Mm -hmm. so um and then what a couple of notes that i wrote down is you know we're an anti-inflammatory meal plan we're gluten-free dairy-free no processed sugar we promote whole foods and movement so now i want to get into the movement side of things so you kind of started out with just tackling the the um the nutrition side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, how did the movement come in and how has that affected your life? Honestly, I just wanted to, instead of being out of breath every all the time, mm-hmm. and I wanted to just, because growing up I played sports and that was my livelihood and I wanted to get just back to feeling that way again, like just moving helps me decompress. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, working out clearly just, it gets rid of your toxins, mm-hmm. it gets rid of your worries, your frustrations, you just mm-hmm. take it out on that workout, mm-hmm. you know? So Agreed. it was change I wanted to make it I wanted and it was a slow one like I just I got a gym membership with my friend but you know it's you shouldn't do it with it with your friend you should do it for yourself Mm -hmm. not because your friend wants you to go why because (laughs) people aren't reliable (laughs) yeah exactly I wait for no one (laughs) that's another story if he doesn't want to go one day and I want to go then that means you're on your own yeah so. And what is going to happen with your life if you mm-hmm. wait for people? Exactly. You, you're you never going to get there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, starting to move more, it really helped. It even helped my joints, like, get less stiffened mm-hmm. from the inflammation that I did have. So it even helped even more with the RA not having such stiff joints Mm -hmm. so the gym thing Mm -hmm. didn't work out so which i knew it wouldn't (laughs) so she uh melissa sat me down and said i I think you need to start coming with me (laughs) and i don't take clients (laughs) at my house it's not what i do anymore i sold my brick and mortar for a reason i am online for a reason (laughs) so we we started twice a week and believe me it was very very hard (laughs) it was extremely hard (laughs) but I'm I'm very grateful I did it yeah so (laughs) what were your fears um because you don't you didn't you've never you know me pretty well Mm -hmm. but you don't know my training style yeah um what were your fears was it what you expected like so the the fears were um I hadn't done it so long I didn't know where to even begin you know what moves do you do what uh, exercises you begin with uh, and I didn't know how tough you'd be on me mm-hmm. <laughs> how tough am I on you uh, you're tough but a good tough mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you don't push me hard but you push me to where you know I sh- should be mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think the number one <laughs> thing that I do with you Mm. and I've always Mm. done with my clients Mm. my number one job Mm. as a personal trainer is to keep you safe Mm -hmm. I'm not going to I know Josh's history he's got perthes um, he's got weak ankles um, and I'm not going to make him go do box jumps Mm. but also I'm not going to let him limit himself Mm. because of what everybody else has told him that he can do his whole life. He had a doctor tell him he can't swim. I call BS on that. Swimming is a great 
great activity, low impact, that's awesome on the body. Um, also, what else have you been told that you can't do from a doctor? Uh, I told I'd never have a job where I'm standing. And Josh stands <laughs> and films your workouts mm -hmm. and your cooking videos for up to an hour. Mm -hmm. So anything else that you've been told? Um, I've told I've never, I'd never be able to go up a ladder. <laughs> Have you gone up a ladder? I've gone up the ladder. So. <laughs> Again, I think that it's the people who are saying that is they're really not thinking outside the box and thinking about, you know, like, instead of popping a pill, let's figure out how we can get Josh strong enough to swim or Josh strong enough to get up a ladder. Or how about giving Josh the confidence he needs to maybe attempt this, but with a professional where it's safe. So, um... I actually, Josh, I love Josh, but Josh can be a little bit shy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I've actually been super surprised um, how aggressive you can be with workouts. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I know when I'm pushing too hard. I know when mm -hmm. someone's pissed at me. Mm -hmm. And I've never felt like that with you. I feel like you've always been like, you get really quiet, but you're like, probably leaving in your car going damn I hung from a bar and raised my legs like mm -hmm. and that's what I really uh, pride myself in with all aspects of my business is just getting people to realize that they're capable and I believe in you and if you mm -hmm. believe in you you can do it yeah. and I go back to that same statement when people say you can't do something they're showing you their limitations not yours and doing it in a safe way and I mean it just feels really good to you know kind of think outside the box um, also one thing that I feel like I hope that you've noticed is exercising improves your range of motion and your balance mm -hmm. do you feel like your balance is a lot better uh, yes my balance is a lot 100 better, better. <laughs> and Josh told me a story that is Things seem so silly, and I used to tell people at my brick and mortar and even on Melvin, you're going to do things that used to be hard for you. You're going to lift a case of water. Silly things mm -hmm. from Walmart or Costco, and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I remember when I used to need help with that. But Josh told me a story about um, his recliner at his house. Can you share that? Recliner at the house. Oof. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just the putting the recliner down and just slap that thing down now instead and, of... And, and it's <laughs> silly, but it yeah. really does go to show that <laughs> working out helps you in your daily life. Yeah. It's not just for muscles and vanity. It's mm -hmm. for to have a better lifestyle. So um, another thing that people, um, if you're experiencing RA now, you can use um, topical creams. Have you ever heard... Um, of a cream that has caspasin. It's the ingredients that make chili peppers hot. It can ease RA pain, but don't use it with a heating pad. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? So, uh, deep breathing, meditation, yoga, aromatherapy, essential oils, turmeric. And I think that although Josh and I don't do a lot of stretching, we do a five minute stretch. If you're a brick and mortar client, you, you remember a lot of people, the, f the most favorite part of the 25 minute workout was the stretch. And if you were in my studio, I turned the music off, I turned the lights on, off. When we, when we move to my new studio, mm -hmm. I'll start doing that for you, Josh. And that way you eliminate all distractions and you breathe and you meditate. And I think the, the one thing that people really, really like is we always end and if you guys are doing my workouts, you know, we end with a positive word, you know. Mm -hmm. I had a friend at my house the other day and we worked out and, you know, she's been having a lot of trouble and she, she messaged me later and she gets these daily affirmations and her daily affirmation and the word she said with me were the same. So it seems so silly, but it's something that can just help you just have a little bit better day. So, um, so... If you Google RA, unfortunately, the treatment is 90, in my opinion, about 
pills and steroids and injections and mm-hmm. only 5% self-care. It should be reversed. If mm-hmm. I were to write the article, mm-hmm. and maybe we should think about this for our fall edition of Melfa mm-hmm. Healthy Times, if I were to write the article, there would absolutely be mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. pills, no steroids, mm-hmm. no medication. It would be 100% mm-hmm. self-care. And the one thing, the number one thing you can do, like Josh says, is just be physically active. Um, this is the key to strengthening your muscles and keeping your joints flexible. I mean, every time I have Josh, right? Mm-hmm. You're rowing. I mean, you're picking up weights. You know, you're moving, moving your hands and your feet, um, and it also protects your joints from further damage. Mm-hmm. Like Josh said, the reason that they were worried and the reason that it was like emergency nine one one is because he would have got joint damage, which unfortunately the scariest part of ra is not being mobile Mm -hmm. deform being deformed i mean that's scary as hell right yeah nobody wants to be in a wheelchair or have their you know fingers and and joints and limbs all crippled up so um another thing too if you don't already know this you can support your joints if they're really achy with splints and that can make things feel better. Um, But number one, my best advice to anybody is just to commit to a healthy lifestyle. And there's two sides of it. There's nutrition, exercise, nutrition, and exercise. And it has to be consistent and it has to be every day. If Josh doesn't address nutrition and exercise for a year he's going to be right back over there and it might not he might not have the same you know outcome as he did now so Mm -hmm. also another thing for uh ra any anti-inflammatory disease and just in general getting enough sleep when you're consuming processed foods and sugar it actually keeps you awake. It's mm-hmm. like you give a kid sugar and they're bouncing off the wall for three hours. It does the same thing for adults, but I don't mm-hmm. think they realize that, oh my gosh, I laid and stared at the ceiling for like four hours and I ate this huge piece of cheesecake. Could that be why? <laughs> yeah, that's why. The sugar affects you just as much as, you know, little kids. So, um, so this is a good subject. I think that there is going to be a lot of people listening to this that can relate and maybe they'll want to reach out to to Josh and Josh will of course um, maybe attach his uh, email Mm -hmm. and um, maybe social media link if you guys have any questions but anything else that you've thought about during this convo Mm -hmm. that you wanted to add or that might help listeners um when you do go into that first appointment like they did to me they give you a booklet of all these different medications and side effects just take it as a grain of salt and make a healthy lifestyle change so you don't have to deal with all those side effects like (laughs) I did (laughs) yeah that's horrible that's crazy well it worked out really well that we met each other and you Mm -hmm. knew me let me ask you this question Josh if you were still delivering food, if you had never met me, and this happened to you, where would you be right now? Uh, I know the exact answer is I'd be still on probably one of those medications that have several side effects. And you would have accepted <laughs> mm-hmm. that that's exactly. your life yep. because somebody told you mm-hmm. that was going to be your life. Yep. Okay. So... You know me, I'm always, you know, if if you're listening to this and you're a new listener, uh, a little bit of my backstory and my personality, I'm a super strong person. We were going around the room one time and my husband was, uh, I think it was Valentine's Day and we were all kind of saying, you know, like, what do you love about each other or what's your best quality? And, And he said that one of my best qualities is my strength and the one thing that hopefully try not to get choked up hopefully um oh 
like I tell my studio clients, like don't don't hold it back. But this kind of resonates with me because I told my kids this the other day. But you you just can't go through life, you know, letting people tell you that you can't do something. And I told my kids growing up, you know, <laughs> I can be a little cocky too. Mm -hmm. It's on my Facebook page for the longest time was a quote. And the quote said it was from Cher. What has Cher done with her life? Do you think Cher gives a shit what mm -hmm. people think? It's when they're not talking about you that you should worry. And it's a different perspective. Wow, that's kind of a weird way to looking at it. I never thought about that every time somebody is talking about me or, you know, tells me that I can't, like, they look at it as a negative, but, you know, be glad that you're so interesting that, um, that people talk about you. But um, I've always told my girls, number one, um, I have two stepdaughters, Marissa and Talia. They each have two boys. I, I've always taught them that you can do anything you set your mind to and I would never ever tell my children that they can't do something and as a you know my my mom I feel like that's that's a, a, a huge quality that my mom instilled in me I have enough ideas for all of us sometimes I try, <laughs> drive Josh crazy I'm like squirrel reel it in what do you want to work on today I'm like oh God, blah, blah, blah. so um, I would call my mom up and I would say, you know, mom, I have an idea and I don't care if I told her I was going to sit down at the city park and pedal snow cones in the winter. My mom would say the same thing every time. If anybody can do it, you can do it. Melissa, she calls me Melissa, although I'm Coach Mel to you guys. So, and, and it's just really a good feeling. And if you're listening to this and you're a parent, just know that you have such a huge influence on your children. And if you can just be that voice in their head that that they know if they call mom or they call dad, that that you believe in them. And I, I feel like hopefully... And, and, and Josh will probably hopefully add to this of, of you know, what are, the, what are the three things that I've taught you, Josh? What are the, what are the three things that you, you always think that you've taken from being around me? Never give up. <laughs> Never give up. Yeah. Um, you, just exactly what you said, that never take what people have told you you know if someone tells you you can't do something make sure to prove them wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> hashtag watch me <laughs> watch us exactly and another one is uh, you know and it's the quote we had on our uh, website for the longest time if you don't enjoy the journey then you won't enjoy the destination yeah you'll <laughs> never get to the destination yeah, yeah. You've got to enjoy the journey. So, yeah. and and that's yeah. what we're teaching with Melfit. It's a lifestyle. It's not a quick fix. It's not liquid gold. It's for the people that are actually want to learn how to live a healthy lifestyle with good food and mm -hmm. and no deprivation. But yeah, it's you know the world is just a cruel place, and and the one thing that that we're gonna our mission for the rest mm -hmm. of our life is to um, teach people through science and education that most of these autoimmune diseases are reversible. High blood pressure, cholesterol, all these things can be cured, in my opinion, through two things, nutrition and exercise, and also teaching people with even the lowest self-esteem that you can be different. You can be a different person and a lot of depression comes from food. Do you agree with that, Josh? Mm -hmm. Why is that, do you think? Do you have the answer to that? 
Why does food, why does, why does processed food make you even more depressed? It makes you feel that crap. It really <laughs> does. I mean, you just feel like sluggish yeah. and no energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to eat an apple and feel exactly. depressed. Or, and, and it just feels good to know and feel good about what you're eating and mm -hmm. feel good about what you're putting in your body. Not to say that you're not going to have a free day, mm -hmm. you know, here and there. But um, the one thing I wanted to add in... And uh, Josh and I recently put a billboard up on the street that I've been doing business with for over 20 years. And I told a story, and I think it's worth sharing. Are we okay on time, Josh? Yeah. If you're walking, you're getting a good walk. So, um, And the story was that when I was 27 years old, I was a waitress. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, if I could just make the amount of money that I made as a waitress, then I'll be fine. So my husband and I are getting my drive through coffee stand ready, and the name of it was the Leopard Lattes, which people still call it that, which drives the new owners crazy. And I remember this woman and her husband, she got out of her car, and she came up to me, and her words, that was, gosh, over 20 years ago and those words are always in the forefront of my mind and her words were do you really think you're gonna make it on this corner do you really think you're gonna make it on this corner like we had no right to even try like she wanted to just try to convince us that we weren't and just run us off and I'm thinking to myself wow a different perspective either I could get pissed off and yell at this lady or be mean to this lady and feel defeated because this one woman thought it wasn't gonna make it or I can turn a negative into a positive and I can I can you know show her not tell show action speaks louder than words you can sit there and say you're gonna do something but unless you do it it's nothing right so that lady's statement was in the forefront of my mind. The first day I opened my business, I had three cars on each side, and it's been like that ever since. I ran that business for 13 years, and the one thing, and gone on to open several other businesses on that street, um, and in my post, I stated, you know, I've worked 80 hours a week my whole life, multiple businesses, up at 4.30, home after dark, no social life. I don't even think I, I didn't watch TV for over 20 years. You can ask Josh. I hardly knew how to turn the TV on. Uh, I mean, about the last maybe three, four years, I've actually learned how to use the remote. Um, while most people were sleeping, I was working. While most people were partying, I was working. I was grinding. And the one thing I followed up with on my post, if I were ever to meet the woman who asked me if I was ever going to make it on that corner, I would follow up with this. Not only to you, lady who doubted me, not only have I made it, I have gone on to purchase that piece of property that you were doubting me on and several other properties on the street and I also own several of my own rental homes and I, and I manage my own property management business. So I share this story not to brag. I share this story and I don't talk a lot about myself. Wouldn't you agree, Josh? Mm -hmm. On social media, I kind of, I'm not super transparent about my life. I like to um, talk about people that I work with and their stories. But I think it's important for you guys to know who your coach is who Josh is and you know we're hard workers we are working hard for you and that's what you really want and the moral of the story is don't ever we're gonna keep coming that's a, that must be our title right yeah. that's our title there it is don't ever ever that woman was putting her own limitations on me those were her limitations where do you think that lady is now and for the time that she spent to walk around and tell everybody else what they couldn't do, she could have accomplished what we have. Mm -hmm. So, anything in closing, Josh? Uh, got everything out. I think that was a good one. It was. All right, that's a wrap. Josh and Coach Mel, 
podcast number 30 something <laughs> a couple years from now we'll be like up there in the hundreds so thank you for our listeners and if you're watching this on youtube um our hopes for these podcasts these are for you these are to hopefully inspire you give you a little bit of knowledge something maybe resonated with you or that you could relate to feel free to reach out to us and let us know because that helps us want to keep you know sitting here and you know sharing some deeply personal things with you guys so um, appreciate you guys uh, share the show like the show subscribe and that's a wrap i'm advertising for nikki at the brew bar <laughs> and uh we'll see you guys on the next milfit podcast bye